I'd like to call to order this meeting of the PBDC of Council Legal Affairs Committee. Here this evening on the committee are Councilors Gravel, Matsoulis, and O'Neill. I'm going to ask uh, Councilor Turco to sit in for Councilor Gould. We have two items on the agenda. Uh, I am going to take them out of order. Uh, move to item B, which is the agreement to enter the civil lawsuit with Massachusetts Opioid Litigation's Attorney Consortium. Um, this evening we have with us a representative from uh, outside council uh, involved with this action uh, on behalf of the city of Peabody, uh, Attorney Richard Sandman. So if I could ask Attorney Sandman to, to uh, come up, please, and state your name and affiliation for the record. Do you want to start? Yeah, well, you feel free to make yourself comfortable at this seat if that's, uh, if that's better for you. Thank you. There we go. Thank you for having me here this evening. My name is Richard Sandman. And um, together with eight other law firms, three of which are from Mass my firm and two others from Massachusetts, and six others nationally, we represent you in the opioid litigation, I represent the city. Um, I met with the mayor and um, with Mr. Buckley several months ago to talk about this litigation that's with, where there's heavy participation statewide and nationally um, to try to recoup expenses and to obtain funds, expenses for past expenditures for, um, to f combat the opioid crisis, including additional costs for police and fire, EMS, public health, any treatment centers, special programs, educational programs, and also to try to obtain funds to fight the crisis on an ongoing basis going forward. And those funds will be needed to take on, um, make sure that there, is at, there are adequate resources for education, prevention, and treatment. Um, Peabody's been hit, like many other cities in Massachusetts, pretty hard with opioid-related overdoses and deaths. In the 2016 and 2017 years, I believe there were approximately 160 to 170 overdoses. And during that time period, I believe in 2017, I believe there were 23 deaths. In 2016, I think there may have been 11. So there was quite a spike in 2017. You're not alone. We represent um, about 120 communities now in Massachusetts. And the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is not alone. This is a nationwide problem. I don't think it's news to anyone. I suspect I've described this as a one degree of separation litigation, where we all know or know someone who knows, um, someone who's been affected by an overdose or unfortunately a death. So what this litigation is intending to do, we filed a case on behalf of Peabody in early July of this year. That case was filed in the United States District Court here in Boston, in the Boston area. And it got shortly thereafter transferred to a coordinating court in Ohio before the Honorable Judge Polster. What happens in our court system is rather than fight certain issues that are common to many communities across the, um, the country, a panel of federal judges meets, multi-district litigation panel, and they decide to coordinate all actions into one court. It's not all actions for one trial, but it is to coordinate for pretrial matters. Why well, take the depositions of certain parties a hundred times when you could do it on one lengthy deposition? Why well, have interrogatories throughout the whole country when you can do it in one court? It saves judicial resources, it saves time for communities, and it becomes a very effective vehicle to, re, to help um, combat um, cases that have significant widespread um, importance. 
So this case was transferred to the multi-district litigation. The MDL panel met and determined that there should be a multi-district litigation coordination. They assigned this to Judge Polster in Ohio, and the cases um, started getting transferred to the judge in um, starting this past, um, basically over the summer. And once the cases get transferred, it's a hurry up and wait. You hurry up, you get your case filed. Um, I just wanted to show you the size of the complaint. This is, if anyone wants interesting reading and something to cure insomnia, I would recommend this 300 and some odd page document. It's very interesting. It gives the history of why the distributors and why the manufacturers um, are responsible, the various causes of action, et cetera. And this is common, again, throughout the whole country. The case is now sitting in Judge Polster's court. And Judge Polster has hundreds, actually thousands, of additional cases nationwide pending before him. He has picked three cases that were originally filed in Ohio and they're up for trial this coming March or April. They have nothing to do with Massachusetts, but they, are, have, well, they will address issues that are common to all cases nationwide. These are called bellwether cases. We will learn a lot about the litigation of these cases by the litigation, of all cases, by the litigation of these three cases. Over the summer, there were approximately 400 depositions taken by both sides, by big pharmaceutical companies and distributors, and by us as well, on just those three cases. And um, those cases are going to tell us a whole lot, as I said, with regard to Peabody and others. Simultaneous to this, Judge Polster, in the first court appearance, told all the parties that he, there was a dropping of the ball here by government, by, um, by lawyers, by you name it, he said, by the health industry, clearly by the pharmaceutical industry and by the distributors of pharmaceuticals. And he said, assigned everyone immediately to settlement discussions. Those have been ongoing. So there's a parallel path going on right now. All these cases in the MDL consolidation, the three bellwether cases are getting prepared for trial, and there are settlement discussions that are also occurring among the parties. Now you can imagine to try to settle a multi-billion dollar case with large pharmaceutical companies with a lot of attorneys involved, a lot of cities involved, and a lot of states involved will be very complicated. And it's every bit as complicated as you would imagine. But I can report, I think there's been some progress. There seems to be good faith on behalf of the um, pharmaceutical companies and distributors to um, at least discuss some kind of global resolution. And, um, and we share that sentiment as well and hope that can be accomplished. Anything that is, if this is resolved on a global basis, then clearly Peabody will be able to participate. I can't give you much more information about what's happening in these meetings. I know a little bit more, they're confidential meetings, but I have nothing that I would even suggest um, advising you of at this point because it's really conjecture. It's baby steps, it's, it's a high-powered settlement team working on this, and we hope there'll be some good news to report in the coming months um, and probably years. But it's moving quickly. The trial of these cases is coming up in six months, and, um, and the settlement talks are continuing as well. In the event that there is no resolution on a global basis, in the event that um, it gets stalled out, that all the discovery has occurred and there's no resolution, then Peabody's case and many other cases from, from Massachusetts and around the country will be sent back to their original jurisdiction. In our case, it would be come back to the um, Eastern District of Massachusetts. And for that, that point, it would be worked up pretty heavily for trial, very heavily for trial, and um, potentially could be tried. Between now and then, the only other event that, is, that I know of at the moment is following the filing of the complaint, the court has required that each community, that each city, complete an opioid um, fact sheet. 
It's asking for information about who your government officials have been for the last 10 years. Let's take a look at budgets. We need to know um, if you're self-insured with regard to comp, for instance, when you first learned of um, the opioid crisis. Have you ever filed a lawsuit against the opioid manufacturers? Questions like that. We have been having um, individual meetings or phone calls uh, with, with a lot of our clients, and we've also been conducting twice a week call-in numbers with people, where cities um, and representatives can call in, and we work with them to complete this fact sheet. It ta it's a little bit of a demand on, pub on your resources. It's not, it's not that difficult. It's, I think people get scared. It's a seven-page document, maybe. I think some communities get scared. Oh, we have to do this. When they work with us, they realize it really wasn't that hard, and it took a few hours. Once we, we have to um, submit that within, in Peabody's case, probably by the middle or the end of December. I don't know the exact date. So we'll be in touch with, um, with the city with regard to that. And very often, it gets assigned to the legal department or it gets assigned to some public health person or somebody to take the lead and just gathering. It's really gathering some documents for us that you already have, many, much of which might already be online. So your case is filed, it's been transferred, you're part of a large movement. I congratulate the mayor and all the cities that have, um, and towns that are participating because I think this is a, a crisis that we all know needs attention. Um, some talks are going on and um, I look forward to presenting something to you in the future that might be um, in the, you know, with regard to um, further discussions and maybe being able to move the ball a little bit more forward. Thank you, Attorney Sam. And uh, questions from members of the committee? Questions from other counselors? Seeing none, thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the update. Oh, actually, I'll have one, just to, to be clear, um, I know this has been stated in, uh, I think, one of the information that came from the mayor's office, but as, in, as well as information that was in the newspaper, but the, the retention of your services, your, your firm, it comes at, on contingency, correct? We're on a contingency fee basis, 25% uh, of gross recovery. We front all costs, out-of-pocket out costs. We get them back only if we're successful in the case. And the reality is, is that cases like this that have um, a lot of people involved, the court very often sets what the fee can be. So we're going to follow whatever the court instructs us to do. Thank you, Attorney Sam. You will appreciate Thank your you. time. Moving to item A, back up the agenda, uh, petition from Stony Brook Condominium Trust requesting a uh, recognition of a 20 mile per hour speed limit for all private ways within Stony Brook condom condominium property. Um, this was a petition that was submitted uh, back in late June, I believe. Uh, it's been reviewed. Um, Councilor Turco, would you like to comment on it? Before? Yes, thank you. Uh, so yes, in, in June I met with uh, several members of uh, the Board of Trustees for Stony Brook Condominiums, uh, two of which are represented here in the audience. And we walked the property and they suggested to me that they should be able to, um, to post speed limit signs, which they provided the section of uh, the Mass General Laws, Chapter 90, Section 18, which states that they, they can do that with the approval of the uh, Peabody City Council, as well as the uh, signature of the mayor. Uh, the mayor has already expressed to the uh, the Board of Trustees at Stony Brook that he is in support of this. Um, through uh, the legal department, um, we've come up with a, uh, a, what I believe to be a pretty good motion that will cover all uh, the city's basis and any concerns that um, may be had. And, and some of those concerns I'll be brief with just, you know, that we may be accepting these streets and, and accepting some responsibility. Uh, that's covered very well in the, um, in the motion. And uh, when I read it, you'll, you'll better understand, um, through uh, Attorney Smirzinski and Attorney Buckley. So this is six private ways 
Uh, Boulder Brook is a condominium complex off of Linfield Street. It's directly next to uh, Aviv Assisted Living, which is Precinct 1 2. Um, and the reason they want to have these signs as enforceable by the PBD Police Department is because a, a, an influx of children have moved into the, uh, the condominium complex and there's not really a play area for these kids and sometimes the kids are, you know, in front of the homes or uh, in front of the townhouses. And just to, to be able to uh, better enforce, they had said that they would like to hire details on occasion um, to let the residents be aware that the police department is present at, at their expense. I'm sure the police department and Sergeant Hawkins is here. He can speak to that effect if you'd like. Um, so I am in full support of it. Um, I, I, I think it's uh, ver the very least we could do for these residents. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Um, I just point out to the committee that um, we do have Sergeant Harkins here this evening. He's reviewed this, um, would be in position to answer questions, as well as uh, Assistant City Solicitor Buckley, who's re reviewed this uh, in detail. Uh, should members of the committee have any questions with that? Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor would like to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll be very brief. Uh, I think it's been covered very well by Councilor Turco, and I wanted to commend him for his work on this issue with Attorney Buckley. Uh, I think that the proposal, the motion that he will be putting forward is a good one, um, and speaking to the Stony Brook condominium residents and, and knowing that area driving up there, it's a really wonderful neighborhood. Uh, there are kids riding bikes, people walking, and I think this is something that would be very helpful to make it a safer area for everyone. And I think uh, I just wanted to voice my support and to thank Councilor Turco for his hard work and, and working on this, uh, on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Questions from the committee? Can we hear the motion? We do need a motion. I think Councilor Turco is in position to make that I was, motion. Yeah, I wasn't asking to make the motion. I said, can we hear it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Move to receive a late communications from Captain Richards, uh, and congratulations to he and his daughter on her wedding day. Uh, Captain Richards uh, would like to let us know that Sergeant Hawkins is here to take his place. Here are the motion. All in favor, any opposed, the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Move to, one, recognize and approve a speed limit of 20 miles per hour for all pr pr private ways within Stony Brook condominium property as allowed under Mass General Laws Chapter 90, Section 18, Paragraph 2. This includes Boulder Brook Drive, Evergreen Way, Oak Leaf Way, Boulder Way, Treetop Way, and Blueberry Way. The recogni recognition of the speed limit on the aforementioned private ways in no way constitutes an acceptance of the roads listed here. Two, request the approval and signature of his honor, Mayor Edward Bettencourt, of the special exemption adopted here today by the Peabody City Council. Three, move to draft and advertise under section 19-47 of the City of Peabody Code of Ordinances governing motor vehicle speed limits, the following subsection C. One, the speed limit on any other, in any way, and or parking area within the private development known as the Stony Brook Condominium shall be 20 miles per hour Without limitation, the speed limit shall apply to Boulder Brook Drive, Evergreen Way, Oak Leaf Way, Boulder Drive, Tree, Treetop Way, and Blueberry Way. See master deed recorded at Essex South District Registry of Deeds in Book 010301, page 398, in Declaration of Trust recorded at said registry in Book 010301, page 412. Two, uh, forthwith, under the approval of the subsection C, the trustees of the Stony Brook Condominium Trust and their designated agents shall purchase and install 20 mile an hour speed limit signs, the type, number, and locations of which shall be approved by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, MassDOT, and the City of Peabody, and or the City of Peabody Police Department Traffic Division. Three, violations of the speed limit shall be subject to the same fines and criminal penalties that are applicable to violations of speed limits on public ways within the city of Peabody, and four, the adoption of this ordinance does not constitute an acceptance by the city of the roads listed in section one as public ways within the meaning of Cha uh, Mass General Laws Chapter 90. Authority, Mass General Laws Chapter 90, Section 18, Paragraph 2. So moved. Councilors, you heard the motion? On the motion, 
Council Chairs. Thank you, Chairman. Even though I'm not part of this committee, I appreciate the time and uh, I have a, just a couple of questions uh, on this. Now, uh, former time in my uh, existence, I was a president of a trustee of a condo association. And um, this is a little different than what normal associations operate with their, within their property. Um, and I understand that the, uh, I can understand why they're doing this and I can appreciate, appreciate and, and support this, but with understanding of what the requirements of the city be, you talked about, if, if I may, if the council could come up and just answer a couple of my questions if he has the information, is that they're gonna hire the um, detailed police to, um, I guess, monitor uh, the, their streetways and things of that and issue t tickets or warnings. This is, again, you, a little unusual as a former trustee. Um, last thing I, I want is to uh, have a bunch of residents calling me saying I just got a ticket for driving through our private way. Um, if these tickets are issued and it goes to court because it's being challenged, would they be paying the expense for the officer to be at court? Good evening. Uh, I believe the question was if the citation were challenged, would they be responsible for paying for us to go to court? I don't have that answer, but I would probably say not. Um, I don't have a definite answer on that, but I would say probably not. Um, generally, when we do a private detail at any other establishment, anything that comes from that, they're not generally responsible for paying any court um, hearing fees or anything like that. Um, but I don't have a definite answer on that. I'd have to ask that question. If I may, to the chair, when you do other details, does officers um, occasionally give tickets out for infraction? Uh, yes, when we do the Christmas details at the mall, we have people driving around in cruises, citing for parking violations, moving violations and such. And, and that detail is paid by the, the mall? Um, some are, some are picked up by the department, but I, I've personally written citations on details on mall property. Um, and had them challenged and not wound up going after the, the mall for, for reimbursement. Okay. And is this a, um, there's not a sunset clause in, in this Council of Turco, right? It, this is ongoing if it's adopted? Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, Council of Trust, yes, it would be ongoing. The, the, uh, it would be city ordinance that they would be recognized um, in perpetual. Perpetuity. Is that the word you told me to use, Attorney Buckley? <laughs> John's trying to lose some uh, good fancy words here. The, um, and is this only on um, speeding and not parking and uh, violations also? Um, as it stands now, the only parking violations we can enforce on a private way would be handicap or fire lane. Um, and that's per state law. And, and you would be, would that be subject to officers' interpretation of depending on who's working the detail. I, I just don't want to get into something that they weren't aware that it may come out in this. Uh, as far as the... Oh. Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Council Trust, um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Council Trust, it, it's, it's just speed limits. Um, nothing else was, was addressed um, in the ordinance. It's actually under the, the section in city ordinance that addresses only speed limits. Um, so no, the, it would not include uh, any other violations. Um, Sergeant Hawkins is gonna prove me wrong, and I'll defer to him. <laughs> Um, when, I, when I received the phone call inquiring about this, I did explain that if we stop a car for a speed limit infraction, any other civil or criminal infraction that we encounter at that time would be subject to whatever enforcement action is necessary. So if I stopped you, I'm not going to say you, if I stopped Mary Smith driving through Stony Brook condominium complex going 30 miles an hour in a 20 mile an hour zone, and she was operating under the influence of liquor, she could be arrested for that. Um, subject to any of the same laws, warrants, anything like that. And that was explained to the Board of Trustees when they spoke to me on the phone. Yes. I'm glad that, that was explained to them. And the, um, again, this was, uh, officers who will be on the complex will be at a, um, um, a detail charge. I mean, or would you be putting patrol throughout the, the complex on a regular basis? 
No, um, that was also explained that we, we don't have the manpower to handle the public ways in this city as far as every speeding plant we have. Um, it was explained that the only way we would be able to do any type of traffic enforcement out there would be at a private detail um, pre-scheduled through the department's detail officer. And, and I'm happy to hear that, uh, only because I would love to see more officers on Lowell Street and intersections throughout the city for cars going through red lights and uh, speeding and things like that. And, it, and we just don't have the manpower. Um, and I just had a, a, one more question to the trustees, if you want. If I'm curious on what their um, bylaws are on speeding throughout their complex, if they have a, um, an ordinance now on what speeding is, if I may. Do we have a representative here from, if you could just state your name and address for the record. Sure. Uh, John D. Thomas uh, at 4 Boulder Way in Peabody, Mass. Uh, I'm one of the trustees of the Stony Brook condo. Um, in our bylaws, it does say that the speed limit will be enforced by the association, by the trustees, but there is no set speed limit. If I may, through the chair, so have you had any, since you don't have no speed limit? We do have the signs posted 20? On, uh, at 20 miles an hour uh, throughout the complex. Uh, and the goal was to have those recognized by the city of Peabody. And we did inform at the June uh, annual meeting with all the residents the stipulations of uh, what we had spoken with uh, Sergeant Harkins in regards to any other violations that would occur uh, that would be fair game. And uh, we did get buy-in from the majority of all of the residents within the complex. Okay, so you haven't had a chance to enforce your own bylaws of the we ha we've, we've provided, uh, we, we have provided fines on our end uh, to residents who are, uh, who are violating that speed limit. The problem is, is that we also have, you know, delivery drivers and Uber drivers and, you know, other cars that are driving through the complex at high rates of speed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Chairs. Council Gravel. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm all in favor of a, of a uh, 20 mile an hour speed limit, particularly there, but I, I've got a question. How does this set up a precedent for other private ways um, in terms of what gives, what would, what would stop us from if we didn't want to provide something of this nature to another private way, say, well, you, you, you gave it to this company, it's a private way, um, why wouldn't you give it to us? And the fact that they're buying the signs and they're paying the details seems to me that any private way could do that. So why would it require a, uh, us to uh, enact this ordinance to allow that? Because it seems to, to go contradictory to everything that we've been told in the past about private property in particular. Um, police, you know, come to a, if you have a parking lot and you say, well, I want you to enforce my towing. But they say, well, I really can't enforce your towing. All I can do is, you know, tell people not to park there. Um, but it's the same idea here. I mean, you're, you're asking them to, inf our police to enforce a speed limit in a private way, um, I just think there are a lot of condominiums out there, you know, what would stop the Arboretum, for instance, or any of the private condominium providers? Just, just curious. Attorney Buckley. No, it's a valid point. I mean, that's something that has been discussed. Um, you know, other condo associations could do that. I don't know if it's as much as a problem as it is in these other condo associations, but they should have bylaws that uh, address speeding too as well. But uh, it's a valid question. I just think if a condo association, to me, it's private property. And they have the right to put whatever they want in their bylaws. They could say, every resident here can't drive more than 20 miles per hour. They don't need a sign from the city of Peabody. They could put up a sign of their own. Wouldn't have to be to our specification. And they basically could hire a, uh, a private detail 
to help them enforce it, correct? I just, I'm just a little concerned that what we're setting up is a precedent here that we are engaging the public process on, into the private sector and, um, you know, maybe other people won't have this problem, but maybe they will. And maybe they'll look at this as, okay, you just set the, the table for us. And I don't know as a counselor how I would ever be able to say no to anybody else if I say yes to this. No, under the statute, I mean, they're, they're allowed to petition the council for this. And then it, these are good, uh, good questions to, to bounce off each other to see if it is uh, something that you wanted to pursue. Other counselors? Seeing none, up. Councilor Raj, no. Uh, sorry, uh, I'll be brief. Just to Councilor Gravel's concern, um, th the good thing about the way that this motion is put forth is there is no cost associated with any of this to the city and there's no burden associated to the city. If there was going to be police presence, it would be a detail that the Stony Brook condominiums would provide. The signage would be something that the Stony Brook condominiums would provide. So if a private way, and th there are private streets that I can think of, there are private associations that Councilor Gravel had mentioned um, as far <clears throat> throughout all the city, if they came before us, I wouldn't actually be opposed to granting them the same permission that I'm in favor of for Stony Brook because it has no liability associated with the city. It has no funding source from the city. It's all up to Stony Brook to supply the police officer to monitor their um, detail. It's up to Stony Brook to supply the signage. So they're just basically making sure that it's part of the DOT and it's part of their, um, their signage, their responsibility. So uh, I will be in favor of this motion. If it did come to a liability or our police would have to monitor it, as Councillor Trust said earlier, I'd rather have our police presence on Lowell Street and, and some place where there's a little bit more of a need. Um, if there was cost associated to it, then I would absolutely think that the, we'd be opening up Pandora's box and any private entity would be looking to go in that route. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Raj. Now, Councillor Gravel. Yeah, I'd just like to respond to that. I, I don't know that that's exactly true. I don't know with that a motion that says you don't accrue any liability when you're actually stepping in to do something is actually something that is so enforceable from a legal perspective that you could say there's absolutely no way this is ever gonna cause you any liability. To me, the truer test of it is a public service is being asked to do an enforcement in a private place. And that can extend well beyond things associated with a speeding sign. And I guess my, my, my real question is, if they have the right to do this on their own and there is absolutely no cost to us, why aren't they just doing this on their own, put up the signs, and pay the detail police, put it in their bylaws, and now there is absolutely no way we can be liable because we're, we're just not even in the, in the engagement. They're basically engaging the police to, to enforce their own issues. So I, I just, I, I have a difficult time with that, that piece being um, the benefits of having a private way is there's no city interference in, in your property. But here we're looking for interference for one particular thing for safety reason, and I appreciate that. And on the one hand, I support it, but on the other hand, I get nervous about us stepping into an area where it could have ramifications in the future. It's just my opinion. Thank you, Councilor Val. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and not to anybody in particular, but I just, I just want to make the point that, that these people um, are residents of the city of Peabody. They pay the same tax rate as each and every one of us. They do not get trash service, we do not plow, we do not pave, we do nothing um, on those locations. And, I, and I, I think 
if there is a slight um, occurrence of a cost to us uh, for enforcement, I, I think it's, it's a very minimal um, ask of an association, especially of this size, that, that actually contributes significantly to the city of Peabody. So to, to ask for, um, they're willing to pay out of their own pocket for regular enforcement. Um, on the occasion that a car speeds up into um, the Stony Brook condominiums, I don't know, maybe after a bank robbery, it's actually had a, a benefit to us that you know we have um, enforcement capabilities up there. I, I think that um, it's not the worst case scenario. There may be, Council Gravel, you're entirely right. Um, there may be three or four other condo associations that come to us um, in the whole scheme of things. Are they asking for a lot? I don't believe so, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Council Manning Martin. Thank you. Uh, through you to maybe a trustee, is there any other way you can hold speeding residents accountable? Can't you fine them in their condo fees or something? So we we can fine the co the residents absolutely, but it's the non it's also the non residents that we have to contend with. Um, and in in regards to hiring a police state detail without the uh, speed limits being recognized, there's nothing that the police can do to enforce that because there is no recognized speed limit with the town. So even if we hired a police detail, there is no recognized speed limit on those roads with the town with the city of Peabody. So there's there's very limited enforcement without this uh, without this being passed. Council meeting man. Thank you. So your visit is there's no check in. I'm not familiar. No, with there's the there's no, there's no gate. check in. No gate. There's no gate. So uh, anybody can drive up. So you know we do have like I said we have delivery drivers, we have Uber drivers, we have uh, you know friends of residents, family of residents uh, that drive up there, and some of them drive at extremely high rates of speed. Well, maybe uh, maybe a gate would solve your problem, slow people down and hold people accountable for who they allow in there and we, we have accountability of the visitors if, or the guests if they're unruly or speeding or, or tearing up your private property. Uh, you might want to say something like that. We have put up like uh, speed bumps uh, to contend with that. We have put up signage saying that children are at play. We have put up speed limit signs. We have fined residents when they are speeding. Uh, we've done, we've, we've kind of hit the maximum of everything that we could possibly do aside from putting up a gate, uh, which our residents do not want. Um, we did, you know, we did talk about that at the annual meeting, but, uh, but this past summer we did have a couple of very close calls with children getting hit. So if we're talking about liability and a child gets hit and we've brought it forth to the, to this council meeting to try to get this move forward. I mean, these are things that we're trying to think of. We're trying to make sure that we're covering all our bases and, and trying to make sure that, you know, we're keeping the, the keeping the kids safe. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to Attorney Buckley. Uh, hello, Adam, Attorney Buckley. Can you please clarify what Mr. DeThomas just said that unless the city recognizes it as a, or, or that we pass this motion to have it become an established 20 mile an hour zone, do they not have any bite um, at all on private property? No, that's correct. I mean, speedlet? I haven't seen their bylaws. Um, I don't know if they have an, their own attorney, a private attorney that does that, but um, Right now, there's no enforceable speed limit there, so that's why they're petitioning the council. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Councillor Gould. Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did I hear correctly that uh, through you, I'd like to ask the trustee, did he mention that the, right now there's actually not a speed limit in the bylaws? Will that be added? Um, I'm assuming um, either way, whether this is successful or not. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, I thought when you were mentioning about the bylaws that right now your bylaws don't have a specific speed limit. Is we, that in, in the bylaws it does not. However, we do have the 20 mile per hour speed limit signs posted. But once again, the bylaws are not being enforced because no, there's no speed limit. 
So you just we, have signs. We just have we, okay. we have signs. So we are we are enforcing it based on those signs. Okay. Will you be no matter what happens here tonight? Will you be adding twenty miles per hour to the bylaws? Yes, we'll be amending the bylaws once you know okay. once we get a result of this. Thank you. And just one uh, thank you. And uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, just wanted to ask a general question. Um, you know, I, I get some valid concerns about liability, and I understand Councillor Turco's comments, and I agree. Um, they are residents of Peabody, but is there any way that through the, I guess, the Board of Trustees, can they add any kind of protection to, to the City of Peabody regarding liability as an additional name insured to their policies if something happens uh, on that property? Just a general question. I don't know that anything about bylaws of, of um, the Condo Association, uh, but just might be something, um, additional protection for Peabody. Thank you. As uh, just to answer, as it is a private way, we have the master insurance, so we would be we would be responsible for anything that happens. Um, you know, if if there was ever an accident that was not involved with a with a operator of a motor vehicle, uh, but if there was an operator of a motor vehicle, then the motor vehicle operator would be held obviously held responsible. But in regards to like the insurance and and the, the liability that would you know we have our master insurance that would that would cover us because that's private property. Understood, but if the PBD police are in the, if they are enforcing laws, they could, you know, uh, be involved with litigation also. If the f false arrest, any of those type things, correct? So that would your policy would protect you, not the the city of Peabody. Thank you. Yeah, it would. It would have this. It would be the same as any if if there was any ever anything on a public way or anything that happened in the mall parking lot. It would be the. It would be the same stipulations. I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I just wanted to raise a concern that I understand if we have our prof police professionals on there, we would probably want some sort of protection for the city of Peabody. Uh, what that is, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor O'Neill. Councilor Chairs. Thank you. I, I did have one other question for our attorney. Um, I know when we change or um, put a speed limit on a public street, we have to petition, we have to go through the state for, do we have to do the same with this? No, in, in the uh, second paragraph of the statute, uh, they petition, and then it's up to the council to approve or disapprove, and then it, there's nothing that goes through the state at that time. Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Council Chair. Council Gravel. Yeah, I think, um, you know, nothing that Council Turco said to me was, uh, was convincing in terms of, you know, because they pay taxes and they don't get services because I've made that argument about every commercial entity in the city. Um, they pay their taxes. Actually, they pay at 175%. And they also don't get trash and they don't get um, any other services associated with the city. The most compelling argument that I've heard tonight was from the trustee, which I can relate to, um, which is is, is a... Uh, a lack of enforcement capability, which carries through to every other private way or private entity as well. People parking in your driveway, for instance, um, you can't remove the car because you haven't posted a sign and there's no enforceability of it. People sticking a, uh, uh, a basketball hoop in front of your house, um, there's no way to remove it because there's no ordinance associated with it. So. The most compelling argument, and the reason I'll support this, is that there is any, there is no uh, lack of, there's a lack of enforceability, and therefore there's a requirement that you have something that allows the police to do something to keep your residents safe. So um, I, I appreciate that, uh, and I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gravel. Um, one just quick point of clarification. Um, related to Councillor Gravel's kind of slippery slope concern about other matters that could be drawn in by this. I, um, Attorney Buckley, I just, uh, I believe based on my reading of the, of the uh, master of law provision that this is strictly limited, specifically contemplate speed limits and, and no other matter. Is that accurate? That's correct. Thank you. Uh, we have um, a motion on the floor. Roll call. Councilors O'Neill. 
Yes. Gould. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gravel. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Move, uh, motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs>